I don't know. Uh, no. I like. Give me a little light, though.
Uh, let's make sure that's part. Let's go. They won't let us. Oh, that's why. All right.
boy. Change it up a little bit, boys. Need a pearl. Gotta have a pearl. Straight from a page of the paper, written off the 
and the weather's so breezy. Man, why can't life always be this easy? She in the mirror dancing so sleazy. I get a call like, where are you, DZ? I try to hit you with the old wobbly. Till I got passed by the poppin' rocks. Man, these niggas got me. I hate these niggas. Oh. Sixer. What's up? We got five minutes. Get everybody in here. Let's focus on how you're going to present the law. And now we're getting into the 
Some of the guys we're using today, uh, we're watching videos with uh, Nolan Ryan, okay, one of the most dominant pitchers ever, okay. Ever. And one of the things, one of the things I love about uh, Nolan Ryan is just how simple he approached pitching. Uh, his stuff was outstanding, so he's throwing very hard, but he's throwing controlled, um, and he's changing pitch speeds very well. A lot of hard throwers don't change speeds very well, and Nolan Ryan was not one of those guys. Had a hammer curveball. Uh, so that's one of the things we're going to go over today. Uh, another one of the guys we looked up was Max Scherzer. Okay, We tried to find some, one of the more dominant pitchers from today, one of the old school old school pitchers. Um, and so Max Scherzer was one of them. Okay, And then Greg Maddox was another one. Okay, Greg Maddox is another guy that we looked up because we wanted to understand how could how could a guy I understand how a guy throwing 97 uh, can dominate on the mound and be a be a dominant pitcher, but I wanted to understand how a guy throwing lower speeds, right? So in the major leagues, 80 if you're throwing 88 miles an hour, you're one of the slower pitchers in the league. And so Greg Maddox was one of the most dominant pitchers of all time throwing in that low range, that 88 to 90 mile per hour window. Okay? And to me, there's more guys that compare to him than compared to like Max Scherzer and these guys throwing 96, 97 miles an hour. Okay, So to me, there's more guys throwing like Greg Maddox, throwing at that lower speed. Okay, And we're trying to figure out a plan for them too. Okay, A um, uh, big thing uh, I know that Ryan talked about when we were, uh, when we were kind of checking him out, is he talked about him being mental tough. Mentally tough, like all the time. Um, he, he trained his his mind to work 100% of the time because he never knew what situation he was going to be in, right? So when we start talking about being mentally tough, we talk about one pitch at a time, literally one pitch at a time. Yeah, we have we have an idea of where we want to throw pitches and what we have to throw next pitch depending on what he swung. But the thing is, you got to go per pitch. You're going one pitch at a time. 
right? So we have an idea of, okay, what happens when, we, when we're pitching? Did we throw a fastball? And what did it look like? Okay. Did we hit a corner? Did we spot up? Did we miss it? Right? Is it a ball or a strike? And did the batter even swing at it? And then we can start playing the philosophy of, hey, how are these guys hitting? Right? How are these guys going to hit through the lineup? Because the first thing you really should be focusing on is batters what? One through four and maybe five. Those are the guys that are going to be the tough outs. Right? That's what you're trying to learn from these guys. If you can already find out the first three guys can't hit, what's the change? Just like we are talking about hitting the other day, right? We don't have to go too, too crazy with our pitch selection. If we have three or four pitches, but we're only using one or two the first inning because they can't even hit the fastball changeup, we don't have to show them the curveball yet. We just kind of keep rolling with fastball changeup, and then we're not putting too much on our plate. And then we get into big situations where we're like, all right, we're stuck. Second baseman in there, I walked the guy, and now I'm trying to get out of an inning, and, I, and I've lost control of the changeup. Well, have you thrown the curveball yet? Let's see if that thing's working, right? Not a bad idea, okay? All right, and so when we started, we're trying to figure out how, uh, how to attack hitters, right? Basic, basic rules of attack, okay? And we tried to break it down. Uh, based on how these pitchers or what strategy these pitchers were using, okay? And so we got a few different ideas. And so, again, you don't have to attack hitters the same way, okay? We're talking about pitchers, okay? You don't have to attack hitters the same way. You guys can have different plans of attack, but just being good at how you pitch the guys, right? Uh, and so one of the easiest ones, right? One of the easiest to me, one of the easiest approaches to pitching was Greg Maddox talking about, not trying to outthink these guys so much, right? You don't have to try to strike everyone out, okay? Control what you can control, okay? Write that down. Control what you can control. And so Greg Maddox talked about not so much trying to outsmart the hitters, but throwing quality pitches, okay? To me, that's something very simple and, and very much something that we can control, which is delivering Focusing more on delivering quality pitches than trying to outsmart everyone and trying to throw perfect pitches, right? Just throw decent pitches towards the mitt or towards the target to me, and we have another, we have a, a chance to be successful. Okay, um, and so let's let's move on. Okay, I spoke to the head coach at UT just the other day. Okay, and so he and I he and I talked just briefly. Okay, about three or four minutes, and so I I told him I was having some frustrations with pitching. Okay, we're very good at hit. We're very good at hitting. Very good at defense. But I felt like we needed more help uh, with the pitching. And so, one of the first comments he made was having to teach his guys to be more competitive. Okay. And so, what does that even mean? He was talking about being less focused on how you're going to deliver the ball, right? He made a comment on on how he liked the way I delivered the ball in high school. Okay, that was one of the things that attracted them to me was how I delivered the ball. So he he was talking about having faith in my delivery, right? And so uh, that's to me that's very basic, right? Being competitive from pitch to pitch. So that's the mindset that you're taking into your bullpens, right? That's the mindset you're taking into your bullpens and attacking hitters through your bullpens, even though again it's just you and the catcher. Okay, some days we may have a hitter, but most days we're not going to have a hitter in there. So that's you have to be in your mindset, right? Being more competitive from pitch to pitch, which means in your head, there's a hitter in the box. Okay, and whatever you know, whatever pitch you're calling with that catcher, you're you're trying to compete the ball into the mitt, right? Which means you're not always focused on your mechanic. You're just going at them with your best delivery, and you're not worried about what the result's gonna be. You're just attacking the mitt, okay, repeatedly. Okay. Um so just not trying to – so Greg Maddox, right, one of the best, not trying to outsmart the hitters. Okay, now we go on to Max Scherzer. Okay, Max Scherzer was talking about uh, executing through a plan. Okay, and so, again, he's not like Greg Maddox where he's just trying to throw quality pitches. He's actually attacking through a plan, okay, through sequences. Okay, what is a sequence? Okay, a sequence, right, is just back-to-back -back pitches. How you're grouping pitches – one, two, three at a time, right? You Having a plan of attack. So let's say we're at the top of the order, right? An example of a plan of attack is we're at the top of the order. We're facing the first two batters. 
Okay, what are the qualities of the first two hitters usually? Are they big power guys? Right? Are they fast? Could they possibly play small ball? Are they are they gonna be hitting the ball behind the outfield? Right? And so to me that that one and two hole is where we're gonna attack hitters, not so much worrying about them driving the ball deep. Right? And so to me that we can trust our fastball early on, right? To allow those hitters to barrel the ball up because we're not scared that they're gonna drive it past the outfield. Okay, three and four hole. Roman talked about attacking the three and four hole. Okay, and to me, those are the best hitters in the lineup, right? Those are the best hitters in the lineup. And so to me, we can be a little picky early on, which means I tell my pitchers to target the middle of the plate. Okay, write this down. Target the middle of the plate and expect the ball to move towards the outside corners or the inside corners. Okay, use the middle of the plate. And as the, the catcher calls the ball to a specific side, all you're doing is expecting the ball to move that way. In your mind, we're targeting the middle with the expectation for the ball to move that way. Okay? So, again, with those three and four hole hitters up, okay, we can be a little more creative. Because, again, it's the three and four hole being the best hitters, they're going to get their hits. To me, the three and four hole, you know, the, the middle of the lineup, whether we're pitching good pitches or not, to me, are some of the best hitters. So, we're expecting them to do their job. Okay? And so, again, we're past the three and four hole hitters. Five through ten, to me, have to be outs. Okay, write that down. Okay, the five through ten hole hitters got to be outs. Okay, those have to be outs. Okay. Uh, okay, and the last thing is just uh, one of the other guys we talked about was Nolan Ryan and uh, Tom House. Okay, Tom House is one of the, to me, most well-known pitching coaches in the country okay he's been working at the major league level as well okay and so tom house talked about balance and posture okay balance and posture he talked about a lot okay another thing that he talked about that we'll go over real quick is just equal and opposite movements through the body okay, okay so let's break down the posture boys let's break it down all right uh get up everybody get up i'll give you about 45 seconds go grab your glove right now Go grab a glove and a baseball. Go. For real, get up. Go grab a baseball. If you're watching this live, go get one because we're going to get started. All right, boys? Turn the tunes up for a second. Never mind. It's a commercial. Jeez, <laughs> we got to have better moves. That's bad timing on that one. All right, boys? Give you a little bit more time. There we go. Rod, you got no moves, by the way, Rod. I saw you doing Dance Dance Revolution. Dude, your sister dances way better than you, man. You got to get some rhythm, man. Okay, here we go, boys. Enough time. Hey, so let's talk about the posture stuff, okay? Let's talk about posture and what these guys are actually talking about and what we need to be looking for. All right, so let's hit the keys. First off, we got to talk about, Diego talked about equal separation with our body. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean? It means we're trying to stay completely centered with our body right here in the middle on our delivery, okay? Now, what happens when we break? We're trying to break our hands. Now, when we break the hands, what goes with it? Well, the entire body. We're splitting everything in half right down the middle. All right. Earlier, I was working on my form, and I see that I have to break. Now, what happens if I break and my body gets behind me? And this stays out here, and I, I'm not evenly. I'm not even. My body's got to be even as I separate with both hands. Okay. This has to break at the same time hands high hands low it doesn't matter because what happens is you still have to break evenly with the body everything's got to be even all right so get in that position where you feel yourself breaking the hands we can even start wide boys we can start a little bit wide here and just work on breaking even breaking even right there because we still have to be balanced all right yeah i got some weight on the back side i'm flat but everything's even Okay, if I break too soon and I'm there, I'm only on the back side. Okay, I want to be able to break and get to that position. And we talked about 90, we had talked about 90 degree angles, all right? But when we're pulling through with our chest, when we're coming through to separation, boys, I need to have a 90 degree angle right here and up. This is it. That's where I want you to be on these pitches going forward. Okay, that's where I want to be. And now my arm motion, hey, 
What they're talking about is this whip right there from there, okay? Right there from there. Now, we want to fill our lap. We want to be able to pull this thing back right there, okay? Good posture. Now, let's talk about bad posture. What's a bad posture look like? Well, if I'm even, chest is up, I feel good. Now, what happens if I let this thing go behind me? My head's going in one direction. I'm open. I'm open. And Nolan Ryan said that was the first thing he talked about is these, you guys, you overthrow the baseball, okay? You get mechanically unsound and you lose all the focus on what you're supposed to be doing, okay? So we can't go open. What do I tell you guys when you go open? Where's the ball go? High and to the right. High and to the right, all right? So uh, grab a baseball. We're going to jump on the mound. We're going to throw a few pitches and see if you can watch us break and watch the delivery of the baseball, Watch our upper body and see if we're, we're getting to this position as much as possible. All right? Or are we coming open and the ball's going to the right? All right, boys, we're going to turn it up. Get up. Get it. Make those motions, boys. We're going to have some fun. Get <laughs> that was terrible, boys. Uh, so quickly, okay, one of the things we didn't talk about was a flat back finish, okay? If we're going to be working to the release at all, okay, if we're going to be working to the release point, okay, I'm trying to get a flat back finish, okay? And so Tom House talked about keeping your eyes going to home plate and talked about a flat back finish, okay? So once you work through the middle of your delivery, once you've done some work on the beginning and through the middle of your delivery, middle part and that beginning part ride and focus on that flat back finish and keeping your eyes on the target to home play. Okay. All right, you can see it. There's a mid on there. I'm gonna try to hit that mid. Right there. Hey, let's go! Let's go! All right. Good stuff. Bueno. Hey. Right. Okay. And so. Again, we've got to get to a point where we trust what's going to happen, right? That's so funny. Okay, that I ended on a banger right there. Okay, but you've got to get to a point to me in your bullpen where you, you just trust what's going to happen. What does that mean? You're not thinking through the delivery. If the stuff that you've been working on works, fine. If it doesn't work, then you know you've still got practice, right? You've still got to, you've still got to practice. Okay, and so again, I can see it in both of our deliveries right now, us thinking through the mechanic and the ball kind of going everywhere. 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 Okay? <laughs> you, I'm telling you, and you, to me, there's times when you just you can't avoid that, okay? Because when you start to break apart the mechanics, okay, one of the things that even us as coaches have to be careful of is staying in this analysis mode. Right, where well, we're thinking about our mechanics, right? If you continue to think about your mechanics like that, guys, you lose this sense of timing, yeah. right? You lose the flow in your delivery. 
Okay. So again, there has to be times where we're, hey, we are focused on flat back. We're focused on separation, right? We're focused on keeping our weight back. But again, the only way those those crack those exercises to me work is if you turn that you turn that an uh, analysis mode off and you're just delivering pitches being a competitive pitcher and trying to again hit that hit that mid off the tee okay all right uh okay and so one of the things uh, again one of the things i wanted to talk about here is functional strength right one of the things that coach uh tom house talked about was just having functional strength right and so to me the one thing we hit on today was posture. Where's my stick? Let me grab a stick real quick. Hey, you can watch me. I'm too competitive. I'm not very happy with my results, so I'm getting back on the mound. Um, now listen to what Diego was saying. You know, he talks about, hey, you're getting the mechanics too much. You know, I did my work last night on what mechanics are supposed to be, and now I'm overthinking it, and now I have to go field and just go throw a baseball now. Let's see if I can start throwing some strikes while Diego uh, works on that. All right, and so two ways that I wait, two ways that I work on posture, right? Posture and balance is one of the things we talked about. Two ways that I, I work on posture, just you can grab your bat or whatever. It's just I do front squats. Okay, to me, front squats are an easy way. Let me back up. Okay, all right, and so again, you got front squats. So one of the things I'm focused on on my front squat, my hips stay back. Okay, it feels like it feels like my tailbone is sticking up. Okay, my chest is up. Okay, if we can get down into a deep front squat position and keep our shoulders back, keep our chest up, okay, that's an easy way to work on your posture. Okay, your ability to create strength behind you, right, while your weight is up front. Okay, to me that's good posture is being able to keep your foundation of strength behind you. Okay, while your body position is up in the front. Okay, another way that I work on posture is through good mornings. Okay, and so I'll go uh, grab a bat or grab a stick or grab the broom. Okay, and so I do good mornings. So my feet are together. Okay, I'm going down. Okay, and you can see that my back is staying flat. Okay, it feels like my butt's sticking out. Again, it feels like my tailbone's sticking up in the sky. But the thing is, my head is up and my chest is up. Okay, what I don't want is this thing. Okay, I don't want my back to hunch over. Okay, as I'm going down, I want those shoulders pulled back. I want that chest up, head up. Okay, we're down, just folding at the hips. Okay, I want to make sure I'm fold, folding at the hips. Okay, and not having my knees bent going down. This is not a squat. Okay, these are, these are good mornings. Where are my legs? They're bent a little bit, just not a lot. Shoulders are pulled back. Okay, focused into my hips. Okay, so it's an easy way to work on my uh, posture. Okay, and we need posture for fielding, hitting. We need it for the lot. Now, wh where else does your posture come from? Uh, the core. The yep. core. Nolan Ryan talked about him having the core strength to be able to get through nine innings, right? He also talked about how he trained himself to throw 12 innings. Because he wanted that whole game. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go throw that many pitches. That's a lot of pitches, right? But he also talked about doing it mechanically sound and not overdoing it for us to go that long. We don't have to go out there and throw as hard as possible. We always have to stay consistent. Hey, right? but let, hey, find a way to build up to that. Yeah. Find a way to build up to that. We don't get to – to me, uh, when you're talking about the greatest. You're talking about the GOAT, right? Nolan Ryan's one of the best pitchers of all time. If that's what he was doing – that's what we're doing. That's exactly what right? we're doing. If he's throwing, that's the thing, dude. If, if that's what one of the best is doing, he threw some of the most explosive stuff. Uh, to me, shoot, he was before, like, performance enhancers and all that nonsense. Yeah. Right? This dude was just straight uh, uh, functional strength. Right? And so we're build up to that. Build up to being able to throw. He threw 200, over 200 pitches in a game before. 242. 242 pitches in a game before at 97 miles an hour in the fastball. Yeah. So to me, that is a testament to his strength and not only his strength, but his stamina, his ability for his arm to just keep taking it, taking it and taking him into the 10th and 12th inning. 
think so we find a way to long toss and build our arm strength up to that. The funniest thing and the best thing that I heard him say, man, it, it really hit me at heart. Um, I'm a workhorse. You know, I teach you boys to work hard. And he said, hey, some of these guys may outplay you. Some of these guys may have better talent than you, just born with it, right? But he said there's one thing that you that the, the guys across from you should never have is work ethic. The guy across from you should not be working harder than you, right? So that core strength, right? Isaiah, that weak-ass core, yeah, you're struggling. <laughs> Them legs be shaking when we're doing core workouts. So we need to get more incorporated with the core. I know you guys hate ab workouts, but that's where it comes from, right? That posture where we we talked about from here to here. You got to tighten up that core, boys. You got to tighten up that core. All right? So we have to incorporate a core workout. We'll have that for you. Hey. We'll have that for you. Core is not just abs, guys. It is back, right? It's your lower back. It is the middle of your back, right? Your core is your trunk, okay? And so, again, we showed a couple of you – know you know what abs – everybody knows ab exercises, Right, but very few people are working on your sides of your abs, okay, which are your obliques, okay, obliques, right? So thrust and twisting, right? You'll see, guys, if you're on Instagram, guys, look up some of these strength guys, and you'll see them throwing these heavy balls into the wall and working on their torque, okay? You don't have to get into the specifics, but Tom House talked about 60 degrees of torque, right, of twisting, right? You don't need to worry about what 60 degrees means. All you need to do is work on strengthening your twisting, okay? And so, get so again, you can get a, 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 a heavy ball or something with some weight on it so that you can work on your turn and tossing that ball into the wall, okay? Both sides, working on both sides of your core I'm and on your ability to torque. As I'm up here, guys, I got, like, uh, most of you know, I mean, I, I'm not a pitcher. Like, I'm learning as I go. And so, like, I'm here in Diego because I saw him. He, he was a master on the, on the mound. Even though he didn't pitch in college, but he was an elite guy in high school. Like, people couldn't touch him. All right? And that's what Pierce is talking about. He just had the good form. So I'm listening as I'm working with him. And you notice, man, my balls are coming hot. And I'm trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Why is my ball coming so hot? Well, earlier, Dago talked about, you know, my delivery is short. Right? Because that's my catching motion that I just got used to throwing. And I was, and even when I played third, I wasn't a long guy. I learned to throw with my body to move and stay short all the time. So now what he talked about, posture. So when I get back on here, I'm starting to throw strikes now as this video goes on. Because I'm more focused on my core and the lower end of my, my back, right? I feel more solid, right? You're kind of just, you're showing off your, your figure, man. It's, it's, it's what, you, what you're doing. You're kind of, you're, you're strutting. You're strutting up there on the mound, right? Because this is me relaxed, right? And then that's me kind of arching and feeling it back here. And I can feel that. And then I can feel the front of my core. And I felt like my ball started going down. I feel so much better. And that's all I changed. I didn't change my delivery point. I've been releasing a baseball all my life. I know that's not the issue. I definitely know that's not the issue. So what I do, yeah, tighten that, tighten that, stay strong from the bottom. And I feel good, man. It's looking really good. All right. All right, so we're we're getting to the last we're getting to the last phase of this, okay? And so, uh, the goal for us is to again be able to. All right, wh where does the quality pitch start? Okay, where does the quality pitch start? This is one of the questions we started asking. Okay, when we heard Greg Maddox talk about you know being able to being able to to dummy it down a little bit, just focus one pitch at a time. Okay, where does a good pitch, where does a quality pitch start? What does that even mean? Start okay. with your fastball, boys. Just start with your fastball. Yep. If you can't throw a fastball consistently and control it, why are you going on to the next pitch? Because it's cool? Because it looks cool? Because the guy that's starting every day on Saturday or Sunday in the championship game is throwing them? Yeah, you ain't there yet. Some of you guys aren't there yet, and you're trying to. Hey, I don't mind the work on, hey, let me figure it out. Because you may be that guy who's just a natural jump ball pitcher. Like, we grew up with guys who didn't have hard fastballs, but their delivery was a little bit slower, so what did they do? Hey, that breaking ball had a lot of break on it because they weren't trying to throw so hard because technically they just really couldn't, right? So even if you're working on that pitch, get to your fastball, man. Make sure you can spot that thing up. Because the thing is, when we throw bullpens, what do we do? All right, 10 fastballs, go. And then you're just working on it. And then what do you do? Five curveballs, go. It's just like hitting 
That's just like getting on a tee and hitting the same exact pitch over and over again. No, break it up, boys. Break it up to where you're on the mound. All right, real life game situation. How am I going to start this? I'm going to start it with a curveball and see if I can throw it for a strike. Boom, curveball. I threw it in the dirt for a ball. Okay, what's the next situation? I'm down 1 0. Am I going to throw the curveball again? Well, maybe if I felt that I just missed the release, just like you're playing around the world, boys, you take that chance, right? You take that chance to shoot it again or you start over. Well, in baseball, you don't start over. You just you get a ball, right? So if I felt that curveball, oh, man, I just missed it. You know what? Let me throw it again so I can go get that strike because he probably doesn't believe I can throw it for a strike because I just chunk it in the dirt. So here I go. Pitch two, curveball, boom, strike, one and one. All right, now what? Well, I just threw two curveballs. I don't want them to show anything else. What am I going to do? Am I going to slow it down or am I going to speed it up? Well, it depends. Are you throwing hard? Do you have a hard fastball? Are you a control guy? Let's pop a corner, right? So we change from there, boys. Different mentality. So change your reps up. Change your reps up just like the T. Get on the mound. Don't just keep throwing fastball, fastball, fastball. Hey, I don't mind 20 to 25 pitches of just working with those pitches. All right, that's your pregame warm-up. Well, now it's game time situation. Let's change it up. Let's mix it in. Let's start writing down. Are we aiming for corners or are we just aiming for the plate? No, move the ball around because the release inches, boys. Inches, inches. It's not that big. You guys think I got to get on the other side of the plate and you make this big adjustment? So the last ball was here. All right, I'm trying to go outside. I'm trying to hit here. What happens? Ball went that way. You couldn't even see it because you make too big of adjustments, man. They're micrometers, centimeters, inches, small, very small. Yeah, all you have to all you have to consider is that a little adjustment here is gonna affect quite a bit of distance down there. Okay, and so if we're making these huge adjustments, the plate's only 17 inches. I mean, how much how much do I really need to change my delivery, right, to move the ball 17 inches? That's that's not a lot of space. So to me, I don't like to change my delivery based on the pitch location. I just change the target in my mind. Okay, I'm changing, I'm shifting the target in my mind. If I try to affect my delivery too much here, to me, I end up, I end up affecting the ball too much at home plate. So again, tiny, tiny little adjustments in your mindset, right? And your eyes looking at the target to me affects it at home plate the way we want. Okay. So the last thing, hey, the last thing I want to go through here. It's just understanding some quick sequences, okay? And so I'm just gonna throw, I'm just gonna throw a couple of sequences, okay? And so first, first sequence I'm gonna go through, right? A rep to me, thinking in reps of like two or three for pitches, okay? It's just classic, okay? Which means hard early, okay? And then soft late, okay? So we'll go through a couple of sequences. We'll see what it looks like, okay? So I'm gonna throw a situation at you, okay? I've got it's the first inning. Okay, I got the one and two hole up, not big power guys, so I'm going right at him with the fastball. Okay, I'm going right at him with the fastball, not expecting him to be able to hit the ball over my outfield, so hopefully they put the ball in play and we can get him out, right, in less than, or in four pitches or less, right? Four pitches or less would be ideal. Okay, so boom, sequence number one. Okay. Fastball right down the middle. Okay, nobody on, nobody out, fastball right down the middle. Hey, here's what we hey, I'm not worried about my mechanic. I'm just trying to deliver that ball to home plate. Okay, I'm being a pitcher right now. I'm not being a, trying to do a, a, a pitching lesson. Okay. Change that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. We got a strike outside corner. This is not we I'm get, going get, get. right back to it. Yeah, that ball hit on the outside corner. I'm going to do it again. See if we can land it in the same spot. Yeah. Back to back. Okay, two outside pass balls for strike. Okay, now I'm going to hit him with the breaking ball in the dirt. Okay, we got the ball up in the zone with the fastball twice. Okay, so this is called changing levels, guys. I have a different philosophy on that. All right, and this is just me thinking at the catcher and me, you know, catching guys that do like this. All right, he spotted a fastball right down the middle. He's controlling the fastball on the outside corner for strike two. All right, I I don't like throwing three pitches in a row, 
but I also like wasting pitches, all right? So if he's spotting up that fastball good, and we're down 0-2, and we're slowly breaking away from the plate with the uh, the hitter's eyes, right? He sees one down the middle, all right? Eyes there, okay? Now the ball went from here to there on the corner. All right, the ball's breaking away from the hitter. All right, now he's realized I'm down 0-2. I got to start swinging at these pitches. Well, since we're moving his eyes away from that direction, let's make it bigger in my thought. Middle, outside, and now let's break immediately off the plate and see if he even swings. Right? So what do we do? Let's throw a changeup that looks like a fastball on the outside for force for a ball. I'm not throwing a strike here. Now, he's taking break and I'm taking change up or a fastball off the plate. You have many situations on what you want to do. What can the batter do? All right? Have fun with it. All right. So this goes into what you want to do as a pitcher. Are you just trying to throw quality pitches? Which means, the, hey, that means the catcher, right, is the one making the game plan. Right? Are you are you okay with the with the catcher calling the game? Right? Or do you again have a plan of attack? Right? I had a plan of attack. I wanted to throw classic. Right? I wanted to throw hard early and soft late. So that's the plan that I wanted to execute. My catcher tried to call a third fastball. Which? What does that do? It's changing my plan. So you need to either have confidence in your plan or you're okay allowing him to make that call. Yeah, this is what you guys are figuring out in the game, and this is what you're figuring out in your bullpen. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. All right. Are you going to make the call or are you going to allow the catcher to make the call? Yeah. I'm making the call, so I'm throwing a break. I'm throwing a curve on the dirt, okay, because that's what I wanted to do. I executed on the first two pitches, so let's finish them. Right. I can tell you right now, if he don't have his game plan Break down, ball, and, baby. if he doesn't have his game plan down in two batters, I'm taking over. <laughs> we'll see. That's good. Hey, that's curveball low, curveball low in the dirt. That's a great pitch, right? That thing low at the bottom of the strike zone. And as a catcher, he calls curveball, right? So what do I do as a catcher? One, I'm expecting that ball in the dirt because that's a great pitch. Your pitcher shouldn't have to focus on, I don't want to throw this ball in the dirt because I don't want to pass ball. Well, get your catcher to make sure he can block that, and then that's a free out. We don't have to hit it in the outfield. We block it. It's a foot in front of us. Easy toss the first, and then we're saving this guy's arm because, like he said, hard in the beginning, soft in the end. So now he's slowing everything down. He's not having to try to throw at 100% just to get people out. We're changing the speeds, and he's resting his arm on different pitches, man. That was great. That was a good pitch, man. Here we go. Right? Uh, so for that target, Okay, so we talked about how to deliver, like, what does a quality pitch mean to us? So my target there was at the catcher's feet, right? Using the target at the catcher's feet. Well, you mean you're not looking at the mitt? No, I never looked at the mitt there, okay, because I never wanted that ball to get to the mitt. No. So in my head, I'm looking at the catcher's feet, and I'm throwing that ball down there. Because it, is it okay if this ball bounces? Absolutely. Yep. Do I want to leave this pitch up in the zone? No shot. Absolutely not. Okay. And so it, sometimes it's better to know where you don't want this ball to go, right? And we playing on the opposite side. So I not I know it's okay if I bounce this ball, right? Because I'm ahead with two strikes. It's okay if I bounce it, right? But it's definitely not okay if I hang it up. Okay. All right. And so now let's get into the three and four hole. Okay. We know these guys can hit, right? If we know these guys can hit. Right, a lot of the times they have better bat speed, so that means they're probably going to be better at what? The fastball. Hitting the fastball, okay? And so now we're at the three and four hole, and so this is where we use a backwards plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is where we, you know, I'm going to use a backwards plan where I'm throwing soft stuff early, right, and then hard stuff late. Yep, Okay. absolutely. So, again, this is why you guys have to practice your grips, right? You have to practice throwing without pressure, Getting used to your release point and getting used to your grips to be effective with the off speed. Yeah, congratulations. You just got one guy, one hole hitter out, number two hole hitter out, and how'd you get him? You hit him with the hard stuff and then the soft stuff. Well, now you got the guy coming up with the power who's going to hit your hard stuff. So like you said, you opposite. So you started off with what? Fastballs in the first two batters? Well, now you're on batter three, and then what do you have to do? Well, I may have not thrown a curveball yet, and I know I got to get to those pitches. Well, now I have to be consistent on that curveball first pitch. 
I can't throw three in the dirt or wait till the third inning till that thing starts working. All right. So that's what the bullpen's for. Can you can you mess with those pitches? Can you throw the change up? Can you throw the curveball, the slider? Can you do all that off of pitch one and still be consistent? Right? Don't don't wait to use it when when you only need it. In the end, you gotta use it in the beginning now. You gotta change the concept of okay, yeah, that curveball's gotta be a strike now. So now the one that he just used. To throw it to, to throw a strike out in the dirt. Now we're gonna raise that thing, but not too high. We still don't want it to break. But for the bigger guys, I'll tell you right now, there's a lot of three, four guy hitters. If you throw a curveball and that thing meat falls in on a first pitch, they're not gonna expect that thing unless they're a dominant pitcher. A do, I mean a dominant hitter. Unless they're very dominant, you may even be able to get away with the one hanging. Now, once you do that, we can't throw that thing that high again because then that's a meat pitch. You already gave him vision. That guy in Meagle. Gone forever. It's all right. So you can get away with the mistakes, but no, hey, I left that thing up there. Man, I can't do that again. He gave me one, right? So we have to be more competitive with those pitches, boys. Way more competitive. Let's see if we can get it up. All right. So we got backwards. Okay, I'm starting him out. This is the first inning. Okay, so I'm not throwing a change up to me. He hasn't seen a change up yet. It looks too similar to a fastball. So I'm going right back to Uncle Charlie. Okay, I don't want again. <laughs> if I'm 13, I'm not throwing curveballs, but I'm I'm throwing as, as me right now. Okay, and so I'm going right at these three and four old guys with a breaking ball early. Okay, to try and get this ball in for a strike. Okay, so now in terms of my target, am I trying to bounce this thing? Nope. No, absolutely not. Okay, and so I'm going to raise up my target just a little bit. I'm going to throw this breaking ball right. I'm going to throw this curveball just to the bottom of the mitt. Okay, there's a mitt down there on a tee. I'm just going to try to land this thing in the bottom of the mitt. Okay, that's my plan. Okay, I'm not going to overcommit to trying to shape this thing. I'm just going to pick a target and go with it. Let's think about how far he is off the box. This three, four guy, is he on the plate? Is he away from the plate? I know some of you guys have talked about that, so that gives you an idea of even location on where you want to go. Okay, you don't want a meatball one. Let's see what he's got. Good. That was good. Bingo. Nice strike. Hey, right. that, and that's a hard pitch to hit. On a first pitch? On a first pitch, that's a hard pitch to hit. Because how many people are expecting curveball right off the bat? Nobody. Not, not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. So, boom, we're, we're up. We're up 0-1. Curveball. Now what next? Now what next? Are you confident enough to throw it again and get away with Ooh. one? Are you that confident that you can break him off and he can't catch up to it? All right? Are you going to bullshit enough and go back to the fastball? Yeah, like Diego says, I'm throwing that curveball again. You saw it. Now I want you to hit it. Can you hit it? Show me. Here we go. Back to back break. Woo! Pretty good. It was good. It was good. A little. That's not bad. All right, 0 2. 0 2, two breakers. Now what? Now what? You a third one? Nah. I'm fastball. I'm elevating the fastball, baby. Because he ain't seen it yet. He ain't seen the fastball he yet. He ain't seen it. He ain't okay. seen it. He's only seen it on deck, and now you got him thinking about two curveballs that he just broke in the plate. So what do you think he's doing? Oh, so, okay. we got, again, we got Max Scherzer. We got Greg Maddox. If I don't throw it, if I don't throw very hard, I'm not trying to challenge him with a high fat, just a high fastball. Hey, be honest with yourself. You know if you throw hard or not. You know. You know. You know, you liar. All right. <laughs> so, again, this goes with you knowing who you are as a pitcher. So are you Greg Maddox? Are you, uh -huh. are you Max Scherzer? Hey, uh, to me, we again, we got more guys like Greg Maddox. So, yeah. what I'm going to do with this fastball is I'm going to move it into the hand. I don't throw very hard. And so this is where your practice comes into play. How comfortable are you throwing this high and inside fastball so that even if he hits it, it's going to be foul. Knuckles. Or knuckles. Right? Or knuckles, or knuckles. Right? If he connects with it, it's either going to hit him in the hands or hit his bat. Right? We're going to jam him or he's going to foul it off. Okay? So I'm not throwing very hard today. So all I'm going to do is throw this ball towards his hand and expect it to move in towards the plate just a bit. Okay, that's the plan. Let's see what happens. Here we go. He killed him. That's really good. <laughs> he brushed him off the plate. <laughs> that's really good. And so if you can't see where that ball landed, okay, there's a, an orange line right there over the 
right-handed batter's box over the inside corner. Okay, and so I hit I hit just above that spot. Okay, and so again, all right. Let's say we miss. Okay, let's say we miss there. See, and the way and the way I think, you see how he sees that different because we have two different batters in mind. Okay, because Diego's batter is off the plate. I'm thinking my way of hitting is I'm on the plate, right? I'm taking away that outside corner. So if I'm that batter and Diego hits the upper edge on the or on the orange and just to the right, and I'm on the plate, that's me doing that because I'm tight in the box, all right? Diego's batter is a little bit off, so he sees that, yeah, it's a better pitch because it's because we're in different different approaches, right? So, yeah, let's throw that thing. I, I love that fastball. I love it inside. You guys are afraid to throw inside because you, you're afraid to hit guys. Hey, what, you're, you're 13, boys. You're nine. Can't be scared to hit them. Hit them! <laughs> can't be scared to I hit them. I mean, em. we're not hitting them on purpose, but we're, we're – that. If it happens, it happens. We're on the mound to get better as ourselves and learn to throw these pitches like the pros and be able to spot up any direction. It can't just be the outside. That's the mental toughness. You're already mentally weak if you're afraid to even go inside. Yeah, toughen up. Toughen up. Go throw inside. All right, so we landed two strikes with the breaking ball. Missed high and inside with the fastball. Now, even though it wasn't a strike, was it an effective pitch? Ooh, was that an effective pitch even though it was a ball? Okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> and so, hey, high and inside, we got the pitch high and inside like we wanted. And so now I'm going to go back to the soft stuff, okay? I went high and in. Now I'm going to throw that change up in there, see if I can get him to bite over that outside corner, okay? So, again, I'm throwing it to the bottom of that mitt. If it hits the catcher in the shoe, it hits him in the shoe. Okay, let's see what a changeup looks like. Oh, that ball might be gone forever. It, it was okay. Gone. Right? That ball was down some. Okay, it hung up just a little bit. Okay. Reality, guys, I'm not throwing my th third best pitch, but I've already thrown too many curveballs. <laughs> I've already thrown too many curveballs. Okay. But, again, I just wanted to go through a few sequences. Right? A few sequences having a plan of attack on the hitter. Hey, guys, don't, don't be the guy that accidentally throws strikes. Don't be the guy that accidentally throws strikes because that that's what that was. That was him throwing a changeup where he's trying to spot up in a good direction, and he accidentally threw a good strike over the plate. Yeah, yeah it's a strike, but like you said, hey, that ball might be gone forever because we laid it up too high. That thing's not low in the zone. There was no corners. There was no corners. It was mid to away, but more over the middle of the plate, so we accidentally threw a strike, and that ball might be gone forever. Or we may get lucky and the dude. It's terrible, and he whips over it, but don't be that guy. Hey, but the reason I have confidence throwing to those three and four hole hitters is because we attack number one and number two. If we did our job on number one and number two, again, I told you, we can get more creative on number three and number four. I did my job. I got those first two hitters out, right, being aggressive with the fastball, right, maybe bouncing a curveball in there, but then now I've got the three and four hole up with nobody on base. Okay, to me, that's one of the keys there. The three and four hole are up with nobody on base. Okay, and so again, we can get creative, right? If I did my job, I'm if I did my job on those first two hitters, I'm probably not going to go to my uh, third best pitch, which is my changeup. Okay, but I just wanted to show you guys uh, a little different, a little different pitch sequence. Oh, by the, the way, four hole. That four hole guy that you're scared of, you got to see him again in a couple of innings. Yep. So you got to be prepared, boys. Hey. They're thinking the same thing. As competitive as you are, you're as a pitcher, you're thinking about 9, 10, 11 guys as you go through the zone. These batters, they're only thinking about one pitcher. They've already seen your stuff, all right? They've seen what you've thrown. Now they're watching you the whole game. You're on display. You're on display where everybody gets to watch. And if they're smart enough, they're going to pick up everything. So how much can you mess them up with your good pitches, right? Not bad, boys. Not bad. Yeah. That's we'll fun. wrap up there, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff that we want to go over. Uh, and so we'll end up breaking this up into a couple of sessions. Absolutely, boys. Um, I even feel like we were cramming it in today. We were cramming in a lot of information yeah, today. There's, there's a lot, boys. Uh, because, again, we there's just once we started uh, uh, looking up videos and we saw some stuff we liked, we kind of we, we put a lot of information together. Okay. So, again, if you have any questions, drop them into the group chat. Okay. Talk to your parents about dropping it into the group chat if you have any questions, okay? And we'll uh, we'll address your questions 
going into the next couple of sessions. Yeah, boys. Have a good one. I'm going to go work on my pitching because I'm terrible. See you later. <laughs> See you later, boys. Go to work. Go to work. <laughs>